Hello, and welcome to another newsletter from Construction Programs and Results. I'm Michael Stone, and I'll be sharing our news newsletter with you. Summertime is here, and we have had some good family time together. Both our daughters came for a family reunion. We had this last Saturday. First time in forever that, I'd, that I did not know everyone when we walked in the door. Babies show up. Our young ones show up with friends or special someones they are involved with. Others don't show up at all for whatever reason. All in all, a good day, and we hope you can experience some good family time this summer as well. We've had a number of calls and emails from clients over the last few weeks, many of them discussing situations and problems that have come up. We thought today would be a good time to catch up on stuff that happens on job sites that can take a big bite out of your profits on any given job. Let's take a look now at how to improve job site profitability. Here are a few topics that are often neglected when we get busy building jobs. These aren't earth-shaking topics, but they are things that cause problems on jobs and problems lead to disgruntled clients, clients, lost referrals, and lower profit margins. Let's start by talking about ordering materials. Immediately after the pre-job layout, every project should be reviewed to see what materials need to be ordered and when. This should be done by both the person who will run the job and the person who sold the job. This task requires a high level of concentration. You need to have your head in the game. That means being in a quiet area with your phones unplugged or turned off and potty stops and lunch taken care of. Focus on the task at hand with no distractions so you don't make mistakes. Review the job in detail. If it helps you have a Gantt chart for the job as a reference point, if you aren't familiar with Gantt charts, you can see one with the link below. Every material or product is considered and a determination is made as to when it will be needed on the job. And from that, an order date is set. <clears throat> Those order dates are then entered on the Gantt chart. Now it's simply a matter of, of faithfully following the Gantt chart to get the job built. Now, I've had some superintendents tell me they don't have time to do all the monkey motion. That is short-sighted. It takes time to deal with what happens when windows and doors or appliances or countertops or light fixtures, etc. aren't ordered on time and they show up late. It then takes even more time to deal with the disgruntled clients because of a delayed project. The investment of time in planning ahead will save hours of aggravation and the expense of expedited shipping fees. We also need to talk about change work orders. I reviewed so many contracts that don't address change work orders or punch lists. Using change work orders wrong or not using them at all is the number two reason construction related businesses fail. <clears throat> Your client needs to understand what a change work order is and why, when, and how it will be used. They need to understand the payment schedule for change work orders. All this needs to be both explained verbally and written down in the contract. Also, your employees need to know how to handle ch requests for changes. Punch lists, like change work orders, are a common problem that can cost you money. It's not uncommon for a client to bring up one problem after another to avoid making the final payment. That's why you need to have the procedure for handling final fixes explained in your contract. We have this language in our book, Markup and Profit Revisited. Borrowing tools is a huge no-no. There should be a blanket rule in your company that prohibits any employees or subs 
from borrowing the building owner's tools or equipment, and that should be included in both your employee manual and your subcontractor manual. You'd be amazed how often this happens, and all too often it leads to disagreements and hard feelings, especially if the tool is broken or damaged. Everyone should have their own hand and small power tools. Larger power tools and equipment should be furnished by the company. Those tools that belong to the company should be assigned to individuals for care and maintenance. Many years ago, one of our subcontractors borrowed a homeowner's wheelbarrow to mix some concrete. They mixed and poured the concrete, but didn't clean the wheelbarrow afterward. That was the last job that sub ever did for our company. Finally, resolve issues promptly. Newsflash, stuff happens in this business and stuff can be spelled all kinds of ways starting with S. When it happens, your number one priority is to get it fixed immediately. I've often seen small issues turn into major incidents because the simple complaint or perceived problem was ignored by the contractor. Instead of addressing the problem, the contractor stuck their head in the sand or ran the other way when they knew something was wrong. If you or someone representing your company makes a mistake, address the mistake and do it now. Apologize and get things right with your client so you can get back to building the job. Everyone, everyone makes mistakes. How you handle those mistakes will show your client how trustworthy and dependable you are. If you handle issues properly and promptly, showing your client you're willing to admit your mistakes and make things right, you should still be able to ask for and get referrals when you finish the job. We cover this more in our article titled, Handling Customer Complaints. It's not easy owning and running a construction company. Construction business failures rank high, number two, on the list of business failures. Planning jobs well before they start, protecting your business with pertinent contract language, and addressing issues when they happen will give your business a better chance of not only surviving, but being profitable as well. Let us know if we can help. Thanks for watching. And may the prophets be with you.